Number 38. Determine the empirical formulas for compounds with the following percent compositions. And then we have letter A. So in this case, we have to find an empirical formula of a compound that is 43.6% phosphorus and 56.4% oxygen. Okay, we got this. So by just, you know, what they tell us, all they give us is a percentage and they're looking for a formula. That might seem a little challenging, but there's a four-step process. If you guys remember the process, you guys will be golden for these types of questions. And the four-step process is this. I'm just going to put this up here. And I think we are good. That looks about centered. But here are the four steps, all starting with percentages and going to an empirical formula. So let's get started. Now, first things first is you guys should know what an empirical formula is, right? It's, it's a formula that is the most simplified. It has the most simplified subscripts. So for example, if I had a formula of, I don't know, Na2Cl2, this would not be a empirical formula. It would be a molecular formula. I can take these two subscripts and divide both of them by two to get NaCl. So that's what we're dealing with here. We want a formula that is the most simplified. Now, when we're working with the four-step process, I like to just list out what I have first. So I'm going to list out what I got. I got 43.6% phosphorus and I have 56.4% oxygen. Now, just to make sure that you guys have everything accounted for, you should add these two percentages up just to make sure that you have 100%. And if we do add them up, it is 100%. So I know that I have my full compound here. But now how do I convert from a percent to gram? Well, we can do a little assuming here. We can assume that just like the total percentage is out of 100, I can assume that when I took this gram sample, it was out of 100 grams. So if I have a total of 100 gram sample, I would technically have the same numbers of grams because the total percentage equals the total amount of grams. So in this case, the percentage just equals the grams. It's as easy as that. So I'm going to say that this basically is the same thing as 43.6 grams of phosphorus, and this is 56.4 grams of oxygen. And the first step is already done. That was easy. Now we go from grams to moles. How do we do that? This is just a conversion. Now we're doing a gram to mole conversion, so I got to use the numbers on the periodic table. Now your mass values, which are the ones that are in decimals, right? The 16 for oxygen and the 30.97 for phosphorus, they might be a little bit different on your periodic table. Mass numbers are rounded differently depended on what periodic table you're using, but the numbers should relatively be the same. Now, remember, with any conversion, and let's focus on phosphorus first, with any conversion, the unit that you don't want when you set up your conversion factor, which is just times by a ratio, the unit that you don't want, in this case, grams of phosphorus, goes on the opposite side. So grams of P on the bottom. And what you do want stays on the top. And in this case, I want to convert to moles, right? Grams on the bottom, moles on the top. Grams and mole on the top. So we can do the same thing for the oxygen. And let me just bring this a little bit down, just so that we have some room here. So I'm going to multiply by that ratio, right? And in this case, I don't want grams of oxygen. So that goes on the bottom and mole of oxygen goes on the top. Now, if you're using these mass numbers, just know that these are the gram amounts. These amounts in grams equals one mole. So make a mental note, guys. Whenever you're using the periodic table to find masses and moles, it's always, always, always one mole. And the number that's actually on here is the gram value. So I have one mole of phosphorus, 
for every 30.97 grams of phosphorus. I have one mole of oxygen for every 16.00 grams of oxygen. And then we cancel out like units, gram of phosphorus, cancel out with gram of phosphorus, gram of oxygen cancels out with gram of oxygen, and we're left with mole of P on the top and mole of O on the, on the top for the other one. So let's figure out what this is. Any number in the denominator is division. So DD, denominator, divide. So 43.6 divided by 30.97. I'm going to bring this out to a few decimal places. So I have 1.408, and that's moles of phosphorus. And then 56.4 divided by 16, I get 3. Point, let's see, 3.525 mole of O. And I just want to make sure I did this right. 43.6, yep, that looks about good. And then 56.4, that looks good. Okay. So second part is done. Halfway there, guys. Now we just have to take the moles that we have and transfer them into some type of mole ratio. Now remember, a ratio is just a number divided by another number. So in this case, I have to divide by something, right? I have these two amounts, and I have to divide by something. But remember, an empirical formula is the most simplified formula. You want to get the smallest number possible. So simplified, smallest. In order to get that ratio, you're going to be dividing by the lowest number. So in this case, you have to analyze the two numbers that you have. I have 1.408 and 3.525. You're making the ratio by dividing, but then divide by what? You divide by the lowest number. Out of 1.408 and 3.525, 1.408 is the smaller number. So I'm going to just divide each one of them by 1.408. Let's just do 408. Now let's see, 1.408 divided by 1.408. I now have one mole of phosphorus. And now let's see what I get for oxygen. 3.525 divided by 1.408. I get 2.5. Now there are some decimals after it, right? So 1.50, right? But I can just say that this is one, uh, sorry, not 1.5, 2.5 moles of oxygen. Okay, now, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> At this stage of the game, right, especially when we're doing an empirical formula, do we ever see decimals in our compounds? Never, right? We don't see like Na1.5Cl, right? It's always a whole number, right? We don't see like H3.502, right? So here's like a next step. You have to correct this step. If you have a decimal, and just know that this is not close enough to round to three. The close enough numbers to round to three would be if your number came out to be like 2.991. It's got to be super, super, super close. You cannot uh, round this to three. Mm -mm. But what we have to do is we have to get this number to be the next best whole number. So, all you have to do is start small and build up. This is all like guessing and checking. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 2.5 and I'm going to try to get this to the next best whole number. If I multiply by 1, I get the same number. So, that's why we don't start at multiplying by 1. But go to the next number. I'll multiply by 2. And 2.5 times 5... Sorry, I just gave you the number. 2.5 times 2 is 5. Ah, that's a whole number. So I'm going to hold that off. But you got to be fair. If you multiply this guy, what do you have to do to this one? Yeah, you got to multiply by 2 as well. So 1 times 2 is 2 moles of P. And that's the new numbers that you have. So I will not 
talk about one mole of phosphorus anymore and 2.5 moles of oxygen, I will talk about two moles of phosphorus and five moles of oxygen. Now this step is done. Now finally I can find out my empirical formula from the two numbers that I have. Doesn't matter which one you start with, but I just like to work from the top to the bottom. So I start with phosphorus, and I have two of them, so I do have to write that I have two of them, and I have oxygen, and I have five of them. And as you can see here, I have my subscripts of two and five. Is there any number that I can divide by, you know, to make this simpler? No, not in terms of whole numbers. So that's why it's a empirical formula. And this is your final answer. So this one was a little bit tricky because you got a decimal here. So just know whenever you get a decimal, you have to correct it first before you go on to your empirical formula. And that's it. Guys, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. As always, I am so thankful that you guys are watching these videos and that you're, you're knowledge of chemistry is increasing and I'm helping you out with that. So that's awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Have a great day.